Hi folks, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create your own corporation or LLC in the state of Florida. Now you will notice that I have, in parts of the video, I have a beard and a different hairstyle. It's because I recorded this in two different instances. First, I created the corporation uh, in Florida or the LLC, and then I waited for that corporation to be approved. Then I went back and applied for my tax ID I made some updates to the corporation and you will notice that through the video. Let's get started. So the first step is to go to the Florida Department of State website, specifically in the division of corporations. The domain name for that is sunbiz.org. I'll put that in the description. So once we're in the division of corporations on the Sunbiz website, we're gonna click here where it says search records. And the first thing you wanna do before creating the LLC or corporation is to make sure that there isn't another business already with a similar name because the state will uh, decline your application to create the new business. So I'm gonna go here in the search for records and I'm gonna click on name and then I wanna search for uh, company names that might possibly have similar names. So my the business I'm trying to create is called QBK Tax services. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into the entity search box and click on search now. And then I'm going to see what's in there. So it doesn't seem to be anything with QBK on it with those three letters. So we might be safe. Uh, let's see if there's something similar, like maybe possibly QB tax services without the K. I'll click on search and nothing with QB tax or QBK tax. So it's not a guarantee that the name itself will be uh, approved, but so far so good. Doesn't seem like any of the, um, the 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 other companies have a similar name. So I'm gonna go back into the division of corporations website. I'm gonna start with the process of actually creating the company. So I'm gonna go back to the homepage of SunBiz, and then I'm gonna click here where it says start a business. And you have some general information, type of business, of entity structures, and then you're gonna see the option that says start e-filing based on what you want to do. If you want to set up an LLC, you would pick limited liability company. If you want a C Corp or an S Corp, you would pick this one that says profit corporation. Now, from the state of Florida perspective, a C Corp or an S Corp is really the same. It's a corporation or incorporated INC. And the S corporation status, it's an IRS only type of election. And this is really the advantage of working with a CPA or a professional that can help you navigate all those questions in terms of which one's better for tax purposes, LLC, corporation, or S corporation. And there isn't a simple answer that's this one's better than the other. It all depends on how big the business is going to be, how many partners you're going to have, and the type of legal structure that you want. And I'm not a lawyer, so I can't speak to legal structure. I can only speak to tax structure. For the time being, I'm just going to let you know I'm going to set up a corporation and I'll do an entirely different video explaining which one you choose based on your circumstances, LLC corporation, S corporation, whatever it happens to be. So I'm going to click here where it says profit corporation to create the corporation. I'll click on profit corporation. And then on the first, on the next page, you get a couple of links here for instructions for simplicity's sake. I know how to do this. so I'm just going to go ahead and start the process. I'm gonna click on the big button. I'm just gonna click on the big button that says file or correct Florida for profit articles. Click on that and the process would be exactly the same whether it's an LLC or a corporation. Okay, so, so I'm gonna show you a uh, corporation but LLC would be the exact same thing. Uh, then I'm gonna click here where it says file articles or corporation. Click on, this, on the checkbox that says I have a read and acknowledge the terms. You should be clicking on the terms and you should be reading uh, the terms and agreeing with that before uh, moving forward. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on start new filing. That would be the next process. Then it's gonna ask me all the details about the corporation. So I'm gonna start with the effective date. This is the date that I'm incorporating essentially. So this will be 1-05-2021 and then is asking you, do you want to also order a certificate of status or a certified copy? Sometimes investors and banks 
and stuff like that would ask for that. I don't need that, so I'm just going to pay the required fee of $70 to register the corporation. Then afterwards, I have to pay an annual fee to renew it and keep it active, which is currently, as of the day of this video, $150 a year, consequently. Corporate name, this is what I'm going to put, QBK Tax Services. And then I can put uh, corporation if I want to. I can put incorporated. I can put corp or I can put ink. I'm going to put uh, ink in this case. I'm just going to simplify it. Just uh, QBK Tax Services, Inc. Then corporate stock shares. Now, generally speaking, if you haven't had an agreement with all the owners, partners, or investors in terms of how many shares each person has, you start with a simple number like 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 or 100,000, right? Just to kind of simplify the process. This is going to be owned by me and me only. So I'm just going to put 100 shares and I'm going to own all 100 shares. That's the legal portion of uh, of deciding how to structure a company and I can't provide advice from a legal perspective. But in order to simplify things, let's assume that uh, that number re will represent the percentage. And then once you figure out who's going to own what, then just put a number there that represents uh, uh, the whole number of all the stock that everybody's going to owe. So if you got three owners or, and two are going to have, let's say, 40% and 40% and one is going to have 20 you can put 100 shares and then in your internal agreement of who owns what stock, when you print your stock certificates, you will do 40 for owner one, 40 for owner two, and 20 for owner uh, three. So I just want to make sure that whatever you're printing as a stock certificate of ownership of that corporation or LLC, if you're doing membership interest certificates, that when you that legal document is going to match whatever you're reporting to the state, which is a whole number of shares that are available. You might need an accountant or a lawyer to kind of talk th through all these things, but in a nutshell, that's what it means. Then we got the principal uh, place of residence, so, I mean, uh, place of business. So I'm going to put the address of my office. So just type that in there. And then it says mailing address. In this case, my mailing address and my, form my formal address or my business address is going to be the same. So I'm going to click on the little checkbox and make it the same. Then it's going to ask me, who is your register agent so that if you're going to have a different person other than the owner or or a, or a manager or a representative be the point person for all things florida department of revenue uh related or florida department of state division of corporations related or possibly if the business gets sued who gets a copy of this inform of that information that's the role of the register agent you can click on what is a register agent on there and then I'll have a little pop-up explaining what are the roles of that register agent. In this case, I'm the owner and the register agent at the same time. So I'm just going to put my uh, personal name here. Okay. All right. And then um, I'll skip business to serve as register agent because it's not a business, the one that is the register agent. It is myself. And then on the address, I'm going to put the address of the register agent, which happens to be the same address that uh, the business has, so I'll keep that in there. And then register agent signature, I'll put there just Hector Garcia. That's it, I'm electronically signing for that. Then it says, look, uh, we're, uh, who is going to get the, uh, the notice uh, that you have to pay the annual fee for $150 and possibly pay a late fee if you don't file it on time? Who's gonna get that? Who is the incorporator? So in this case, I'm treating the the, uh, register agent and the incorporator as the same. So I'm just going to put my same information there. Again, it's all the same person per se. Uh, so we have uh, myself as a register agent and myself as the incorporator. Perfect. And then I'll also sign uh, as the incorporator. So again, you could have um, an incorporator that's different than the register agent. That's also different than the owners or the, or the corporate officers. Then it says, what is the corporate purpose? So you have two options here. Once you can type here what the business does. So we can call it um, professional tax preparation. And then basically you're going to set in stone what is the legal capacity of that business. I don't know if there's a specific lingo that you have to use in here or if just writing natural English is good enough. I'm not a lawyer. Um, but I generally almost never actually type in 
what the business does, I'll hit this checkbox that says all and any lawful business because if I don't know exactly what I'm going to do or maybe do other services, I just want to my company to serve in capacity of being able to do anything that's legal, basically. Then we're going to go down here. It says correspondence, email, and name. So I'll put here my email address um, as well. So this is the person that's going to actually get the email letting them know that you have to um, uh, uh, re uh, update the company, pay the annual fees, that sort of thing. That's the contact person, the official contact person. All right, now we're going to talk about the officers or directors. So I am the president, so I'm going to put myself as the president. I'm going to put P, and then I'll put my name here as the president. And then I'm going to put my uh, the address. So usually you'll put the address of the director. In this case, I'm putting the same address of, um, of the business. But a lot of people will put their personal address in their, like, their home residence. And then we're going to have another... Uh, director here, I'm going to put vice president, and then I'm going to put a different person, right, who's the manager of the business, and I'm going to put, uh, let's put Andrea here, and let's also put the same address, okay, perfect, so we have, we have Hector as the president, okay, that's perfect, we have uh, Andrea as the VP, and then I don't need a third person here, I'll just delete that. Um, that's good. Okay, so I got my two officers, president and vice president, with their addresses. Let me put U.S. here as the country. And let's see what else we have down here. Okay, nothing else. Okay, and if you actually have a business itself, be a, uh, a director or an officer of the, of the business, so a business being a director of a business, you would put that in there. By the way, this is not ownership. This doesn't mean ownership. This is just the officers, right? You can have a private document that explains who the owners are. And we talked about that. That gets done through cert uh, stock certificates. And that's more of a legal question than an accounting question. And I'm not going to get into that. But from the purposes of the state to be officially a corporation, registered as a corporation, this is the process that you take and you register your officers only, which could also happen to be owners. But in this case, uh, it doesn't matter. We're, we're, we're disclosing who the officers are. Make sure that you put this right because when you go open a bank account, uh, they're going to want to require that the officers sign on those or at least one officer signs or is present when opening a bank account. So you got to make sure that you put people there that are going to be the ones dealing with all the money and the banking and their, the official point of contacts for, for any context of the business. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on continue. And then it's going to ask me to review really quick. You got the start date, the business name, the number of shares, principal area of resident, principal place of business, sorry, uh, register agent and the register agent's contact information, incorporator name, a corporate purpose, uh, contact person and officers and directors. And then we hit continue. Okay. Then it, then it gives me a document tracking number. I would print this page or save it. Okay, so let me save this as a PDF here. Save it in my computer somewhere, just in case you have an issue in the process, you know exactly what the document tracking number is, and you know um, that's your reference number if you need to talk directly with the state because maybe there's an issue getting your corporation done. Then we're going to hit on continue. Okay, then it's going to ask you for form of payment. I'm just going to put credit card payment and enter my credit card information. So after I enter my credit card and billing information, I'm going to hit continue. You're going to give it a second for it to uh, summarize the payment. You're going to review the payment and then you have to press one more button, which is a process payment. We're going to click on process payment and that's done. There's your receipt. Now, this doesn't mean that business is incorporated already. It means that they have processed your request and they have received your payment. So I'm also going to save that receipt and then click on finish. And, and that's it. That's the process of setting up the corporation. Now, once uh, the, the corporation is approved by the state, you're going to get an email uh, letting you know, by the way, this company is officially 
set up. And at that point, you will know you have the official capacity to, uh, to, uh, to work as that business. If there's a problem, you might get an email stating that problem. If there's a delay of some sort or additional questions, that's all going to be done via email. You can also call the Department of State, Division of Corporations, and discuss that with them. If you wanted to double check what that looks like, we're going to click here where it says uh, search records, and we're going to click on search records, and then we're going to click on name, and then we're going to search for the company name. And then hopefully once, and I'm doing this sort of immediately after I applied, so this is not going to show up yet. Once they do a search, that company should show up in your search. You can look at it, and you can officially see that the company was set up. So the next step is we're going to go into Google, and we are going to search new EIN, and that's it. You, or you can type the word IRS. You're going to scroll down until you find the irs.gov website that says apply for an employer identification number. In this page, you're going to read all the instructions, make sure you understand what responsible party means. Uh, you have a limit to one EIN per day on the application. You're going to read through all that and click on apply online now. Okay. So the next page uh, tells you um, about the EIN assistant. There's a whole bunch of additional instructions. Once you read through that and you understand exactly what all this stuff uh, means or or, or what your responsibilities are, terms and conditions. You're going to read through all that, make sure you understand it, and you're going to click on Begin Application. So we'll start by choosing our legal entity. We got sole proprietor. We have partnerships. We have corporations, which includes C and S corporations, LLC. Uh, then we have other things like state, trust, and you have an option to view additional as well. Um, for this example, uh, we're going to go out, go ahead and choose corporations because my intent is to set up an S corporation for this entity and click on continue. Then it's going to ask me a more detailed question. Is it a corporation, a regular C corporation? Is it an S corporation, subchapter S corporation? Uh, and then you got all the options like personal service company. We'll ignore that. Select S corporation and then click on continue. I'll have another video where I explain why S Corporation, but that for now, just, just follow along. Then it tells you that after this, you must file an additional form, Form 2553, to elect the S Corp status. So um, I created the corporation, and I, I asked for an EIN, but later on, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to hit continue and go to the next page, where it's going to ask me, why are you getting an EIN? So you can go through them, the one that makes the most sense for you. In my case, I'm going to do start a new business because it's the most common one, and then hit continue. <laughs> then I start with the personal information. So I'm the responsible party. I'm going to put my name, my last name. I'm going to put my, um, my social security number in there, and I'm applying as the responsible party. Not necessarily the owner, but I also happen to be the owner. And then it's going to ask me, are you the president, CEO, or corporate officer, or are you a third party? And then you, you pick the two options there. So in this case, I'm an owner, corporate officer, everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, choose that and hit continue. Then it's asking me for the legal address of the business, the physical address of the business. So I'll start by typing my, my physical address. So I'll put the address there. And then um, if I want that com company uh mail, that official corporate mail, to also go with my name to say company name to the care of Hector or whatever. I'll put that in there. And then if I don't have a different address, I can hit continue. If there are errors in the field, for example, IRS doesn't allow commas, dots, hyphens, that sort of thing. So I got rid of uh, that and I'll, let's just try unit 134. Okay, perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Okay, then it's going to ask me, hey, we checked with uh, a USPS and for the official address, and I'm going to accept their version because it actually happens to be more accurate. Then it's going to ask me the big question, which is what is the name of the corporation? So I'll put QBK Tax Services, which is the name of the corporation we set up in Florida. I'm putting comma Inc. here uh, because uh, that's the official legal name, uh, but um, you have to just be aware that 
If you're a corporation, you'll be Inc. or Corp. If you're an LLC, it would be LLC. And um, I think the IRS doesn't accept comma, so I'm going to uh, skip the comma in this case. And it will just do QBK Tax Services, Inc. And if I have a, a DBA, a doing business as a trade name, I would just put that in there. Not required, but if you happen to have a trade name as well, you put that in there. You pick the state that it was incorporated in. You, you pick the state in which uh, it was incorporated or operates. And then we put the uh, date and the year that the business officially started. And we hit continue. There's going to be a couple questions like, you know, is, does your business deal with highway motor vehicle, right, of more than 55,000 pounds or whatever? So I'm going to put no uh, to that first one because it ha doesn't happen to be. But you want to read through them. You know, do we do gambling? Well, no. Uh, are we doing excise tax returns? Well, no. Uh, do we ma do um, manufacture alcohol, tobacco, firearms? No. And then the question about employees. Do you have or expect to have employees in the next year? And then if you do, you want to put yes because you also want to apply to be an employer. So we're going to hit continue. And then we're going to, on the next page, we're going to uh, fill out all the information about us as an employer or as a future employer. And if you put the no there, that's okay. You can always apply to be an employer later on. Uh, by creating an EFTPS account, which is how you pay taxes electronically. But for now, we're just basically letting the IRS know, yes, we are going to have employees. Yes, we expect to have employees. So, um, you know, so expect a W-2, you know, from us, a 941, all the payroll uh, tax forms. All right, the next page, this is where he's asking me about my wages or future wages. So let's say I'm, I'm planning to pay wages towards the end of the year or the middle of the year, whatever it happens to be. So I'm, this is when I plan to pay, okay? So I start putting that there or let's just push it out to like October uh, or even December. Like you basically, this is an estimate. That they're not going to hold you to it. Um, so we're going to put, put the number of employees, okay, um, in here, uh, which you, you, you get to choose a number of agricultural employees, or, or re regular employees, and then we hit continue. Then it says, what does your business organization do? So we go through all the different industries, and you want to try to find the one that best fits you. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe in our case, we could be finance. It gets really tough. Accounting is actually doesn't fit into any of these. This is for a tax firm that I'm creating. So you want to pick the one that's best. If you can't quite figure it out, you can click on other and see if there's more options on the other, and then hit continue. And you will notice that you will see things like consulting, manufacturing, all, all things. And then if, if yours actually fits any of them, you can just uh, pick one of those, the one that makes the most uh, sense for you. Again, you, you, you have to do your best here. There's no right or wrong. Just hopefully you'll get it right. Um, and again, consulting works for most service companies. Uh, but in my case, I'm going to click other and just type it in there. Tax preparation services. Again, I'm not afraid if I got it wrong, I can manually type it in there and that's uh, good enough uh, for me. So we're going to hit continue. Okay. And then you got the option to either request it by mail or get the EIN letter immediately online. Of course, I'm going to choose that. We want online. We want now. So we'll hit continue. Then it takes us to a um, summary, right? So just going through, making sure that it's correct. You want to check that all the information, it's accurate, addresses, social security numbers, or the last four digits anyway, uh, how many employees you plan to have, you know, type of company, what you do, what you don't do, and then we're going to hit submit. Okay, we immediately got a tax ID. It's on the screen. I can print it on the screen. Actually, you should print this screen. But down here, it says click here for EIN information. You click on that. It's actually going to download a PDF into your computer, and you want to save this file. Don't lose it. This is an official document that proves that your company, it's registered with IRS, and it has a, a tax ID, a EIN. I'm just going to call it by the company name, right? And then just save it in my computer. Obviously, put that in a safe place. Your bank is going to ask for this. Uh, somebody asking for a loan may ask for this. Government entities you're contracting with may ask for this. So you definitely want to have this information handy. We're going to hit continue. 
And then that finishes the process. And that's it. We officially have our EIN, our tax ID number for our new uh, corporation. So we can actually file a tax return. We can actually employ people officially. We can open a bank account. That EIN number is going to be probably the most important document when you first create the company. So you can report all your tax returns and all your official activities with the government. Okay, so it actually took a couple of weeks. Sometimes it takes uh, two days. Sometimes it could take a couple of weeks for the corporation to be officially set up by the state. So I got an email here confirming your articles of incorporation for QBK tax services were filed on January 25th. So obviously uh, three weeks in this case. Um, And then it gives you some instructions kind of reminding you to renew the company every year because in Florida you have to do a, an annual renewal and pay for that. And I have a different video that explains that process. I'll put it in the description somewhere. And here is my document number. So this is my official uh, document number in which I can use to find the company information in the Sunbiz website. Let's go to it. Let me go to sunbiz.org, which will take me to the Division of Corporations. I'm going to click on search records. I can either search by name or by document number. Let's try by name. I'm not sure why that wasn't working. Okay. And then we'll put here QBK tax services in the search. Go to search now. And there it is. Uh, QBK tax services, Inc. I can click on that. There's the company document number, file date. It's active principal address, register agent, officer one, officer two. It's pretty clear. Down here where it says domestic uh, profit, I can click on view PDF image, and this is called the Articles of Incorporation. This is the standard stuff that is filed by the by the state. If you do this with an attorney, um, most attorneys draft their own Articles of Incorporation, and they include a lot more details about what the company can do and can do, and that sort of thing. That's kind of one of the benefits of going with an attorney. If you don't go with an attorney, it's pretty much plain vanilla template based articles of incorporation. Now, one thing you'll notice is my tax ID is not here. My EIN is not here. And that's because in the order that we did this, we set up the Florida Corporation first, then required, then requested the EIN or the tax ID. That's why we never entered that tax ID at the beginning. So only when you request a tax ID first and then do the corporation second, that's when you can enter the tax ID during the application process. But that's not the order in which we do things. Generally, my recommendation is set up the company first, make sure that I, uh, the f- state confirms that the company exists, that it's been registered, that the name is good, then request a tax ID. Um, and then you go back to here and update that. Let me go, don't remember exactly what's the, let me do some this again. And I think it's here under manage change existing business. Let's click on that and update your information. That's the one. Update your information. And then down here it says uh, Federal Employer Tax ID. So we'll click on that. Uh, Pretty simple. So we'll type here QBK. Let me just go back to the search again. I'm just going to copy and paste. That might be easier. So QBK Tax Services. Go ahead and paste that. And then what's our state document number? Let's go back here. Copy this. Paste that here, an email address for contact. Okay, so I got document or email address, and then what is the new tax ID? So we got a PDF file that we received when we registered it. Here we go. Copy this. Okay, and paste that in here. Beautiful. I'm not a robot. Yes. Okay, verify. Good. Okay, so now we click on submit. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how to request to convert the corporation to an S corporation in the eyes of the IRS. So, even though when we applied for the EIN tax ID, we selected that we wanted to be an S corporation, it doesn't happen automatically. So, in order to do that, you're going to go into Google and you're going to type form 2553. Okay, just go to form 2553 and you download the form okay now what you need to do in this form is you need to fill it out 
immediately after you set up your corporation to convert your corporation into an S type of corporation. So to do that, we're gonna put the company name here. Then we type the EIN number. Date incorporated, so we go back to that original email, which says effective on January 20th, so we're gonna match the states. 20, 2021, then the address. State of incorporation, Florida. Am I doing anything has to do with um, a change in name or address? So the answer is no. Election to be effective tax year. So in this case, I'm going to put the tax year. So I'll put 01, 01, 2021. So basically, it means that I want the first tax year um, with an effective calendar uh, date uh, to be the one that gets up, up. So basically what I want is to be taxed as an S corporation from the get-go. So I'll just put 1-1-2021, and then it says, what tax year would you like to select? I'm gonna select calendar year, so I don't want a specific fiscal year. If you wanna change your, to, uh, your taxability to a fiscal year, you would do this at this point. Then we got the name and title of the representative. So put here Hector Garcia. President. Okay, and then my phone number. Okay, then it says if you're filing late, is there a reasonable cost for you filing late? I'm not filing late because I'm filing on time. Um, if you are doing late filings, you need to Google what are the type of things that you would type in here. But this is a timely filing that we're doing immediately. One thing here on the name, I just noticed I didn't put ink. Let me put that there as well. So I'm going to scroll down and right here is a signature officer. Once you print this, that's where you would sign and put your title and then put your date. Then on the name and address of each officer, I'm going to put both of our names here with address and then officer two. Okay, so percentage ownership, let's say this is a 50-50. So put 50-50. Date acquired will be when you acquired the company's shares, okay? So in this case, it would be 01-20-2021, which is pretty much when we created the company. So 01-20-21. And I'm, I'm gonna put percent here just to make sure there's no confusion. So then once we're done with this, I, um, we're gonna type in the social security number of each of the officers or the owners in this case. Okay, so just make up the numbers here. Okay, and then what is the tax year of each of the individual uh, taxpayers that goes in the box next to it? It's not letting me uh, type it in there, but then you would put, it's letting me know. So 1230 and then 1230. Uh, actually, what am I doing? Not 30, 31. <laughs> so 1231. 12, 31, okay? That means um, I, my end, my individual tax year for each of the taxpayer ends at the end of the year. Then we print it and you're gonna sign and date it. Uh, I can't type it, so these two boxes, signature and date, that needs to be done manually. And then I'm gonna scroll down and there's some, a, couple, a couple extra boxes here. So this is if you're doing a fiscal year, which we're doing, so we're gonna skip that. And then we're gonna come down here and we're not a qualified subchapter S trust. So we can't, we don't have to put anything uh, in there either. Okay. So we just, um, so we can just skip that part three. So part two and part three is not necessarily, we do need that part one with the uh, names, socials, and percentage ownership of each of the officers and, um, and all the information that comes in here. So really quick, um, just a couple of rules around S corporations is uh, you can have more than 100 shareholders and all the shareholders need to be U.S. persons. And you can only convert to an S corporation straight with a Form 2553 if you originally incorporated as a corporation. 
So if you incorporate it as an LLC and you want to be taxed as an S corporation, you need to file the 2553 plus you need to file another form called the 8832, which is a different uh, form altogether. So usually just kind of file both both of them uh, back to back. So here's form 8832. It will tell you here, depending on the form that you're filing, 8832 and the state that you're in, which is going to be the address that you're going to send this to. So in my case, I'm a Florida corporation. I'll be sending this one to Utah. So again, the 8832, that's only if you set up an LLC and you want to be taxed as a corporation or an S corporation. If you want to be an LLC taxed as a corporation, you will file Form 8832. If you want to be an LLC taxed as an S corporation, you will file both the 8832 and the Form 2553, which I just showing you how to fill out. So up here, pretty self-explanatory, name of the company, address, tax ID. We're not doing a uh, late election in this case because we're doing it right timely, so we'll skip that part. Then on box uh, on part one, box one, we're going to put A, which is the initial classification of a new company. Um, and then uh, for 2A, we can skip that because of the nature of what we've done. And then we're going to go to uh, 3, which is, is there more than one owner? And if you put uh, yes, it tells you you can be either. You can be a partnership or you can be a, uh, a corporation. If you put uh, no, it tells you, hey, you can either be a corporation or a disregarded entity, which means you don't need to uh, file a separate tax return. So in this case, we're going to put yes. But uh, for the purposes of an S corporation, it doesn't matter if it's one or two owners or three or up to 100. Um, um, you, it doesn't matter what you put in the answer here. You can still convert it to an S corp. So I'm going to put yes, there's more than one owner. And if there was, in fact, just one owner here on uh, error four, you would have to put the owner's name and their uh, social security number because the IRS wants to know that this LLC that you're possibly classifying as a disregarded entity, as it says here, uh, whose personal tax return they need to be looking at that LLC's return. Now, you can use the 8832 to convert the LLC from a disregarded entity to a partnership or to a corporation. The exercise that we're doing specifically now is to convert it to a corporation so we can also file the 2553 to convert it to an S corporation. So here, number five is, if one of the owners is another company, is another corporation, uh, you would have to identify identify that, or at least the, the main one, or the parent one. And then we're going to go down here to uh, six, which is type of entity. For the purposes of converting an LLC to an S corporation, we would select the first one, which is basically converting it to a corporation, and then the 2553 would, do, would finish the job, basically into the S corporation. So the 8832 converts it to a C corporation. The 2553 converts it to an S corporation. If you already set up the company as a corporation, period, you don't have to go to this form because you don't have to convert anything. Uh, then down here, it says, you know, if the company is foreign, foreign jurisdiction, you would put that. Election uh, effective date, you would put there the first day of the business. In that case, so 1, 20, 21, whatever it happens to be. 2021, and then the name and title of the contact person. So we'll put there my name. Okay, and then the phone number. Okay, and then every corporate officer would need to sign, date, and put a title there. Okay, so everybody that's a president, vice president, anybody that's an officer, I mean, it says it right here. Um, or in the, in the instructions, they'll say exactly who the who the officers are. And then if you are scrolling down a little bit, if you're filing this late, then you would put uh, an explanation to why you're filing late. Again, for the context of this video, we're not filing late. And then another set of signatures, same exact signatures for uh, the late um, relief portion of the um, of this election. Then down here, there's some general instructions. You can check them out. And that's the 8832 uh, form in a nutshell. Again, to avoid any confusion, if you set up as a corporation with an Inc. or a Corp. in your state, in this case, Florida, but in any state that you're in, you only need to do the form 2553 
to convert to an S corp. And if you file an an LLC, you got to do both the 8832 and the 2553 back to back so you can do a conversion and then an S election. Now, why you would do that? I would refer you to your accountant. I will put some videos below in terms of the advantages of an S corporation. There are some pros and cons to doing that, but it's a very common question that we get is good follow through after we set up the, the, the corporation or the LLC wanting to be taxed as an, as, an, uh, as an S corporation. Anyway, my recommendation in general is to get this done by a professional, attorney, accountant, uh, someone that would not just set up the corporation for you and select the right tax entity. You also want someone to draft the documents that, uh, that entails the relationship between the parties, especially when there's more than one owner. It is really important to have documents in place that explain and give a pathway to um, to you know dealing with disagreements or you know authorizing specific owners or directors to be doing certain things in behalf of the company. I mean, a lot of a lot of these things that I'm saying are with the, within the context of legality or it's a legal thing. And as an accountant, I can't give any legal advice. The only generic legal advice I'm giving you is seek professional legal advice. Um, and this video is only intended for people that uh, feel savvy enough that they can set up their own corporation, at least the sun-based part, the, the Florida part, and the couple of these forms. This stuff is really not that complicated. If you do it wrong, you can have some tax repercussions, of course, on the IRS side. Um, but a lot of people set up their own companies and they don't need to pay someone a couple hundred bucks or a couple thousand dollars to set up the company for them. I believe the value on the accountant is on the entity selection, on the tax entity selection, and doing the analysis on whether or not a C-Corp, an S-Corp, or a partnership, it's better for you in terms of the general composition and tax treatment of the company. And then where legal advice could come in handy is setting up these contracts and agreements uh, for all the business that you will be engaging in. Anyway, um, th there's my email below. So if you need to contact me or ask me a question, again, I can't give legal advice. I can only give tax advice. Uh, you can contact me there. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you on the next one. And by the way, if you're a small business owner starting a business for the first time, and this video is the one that helped you start your business, I am so glad I was the first professional you seeked out in your journey. And best of luck uh, to, your, to you and your business. Thanks.